Hi everybody, my name is Terry and this is The Catholic Breakdown. Sex. I've heard a lot about sex in Catholicism. Everything from Catholics don't even like sex to look how many kids they have, as if the kids appeared out of thin air. So let's talk about sex. Do Catholics even like it? Why is it such a big deal? How do Catholics have sex? Yup. Sex is a big deal for a number of reasons. Number one, it was commanded by God. In Genesis 1, just after God made mankind, he said, be fertile and multiply. Humanity and sexuality is inseparable, and sex is good as it has the capacity to bring forth life. Sex is not something to shy away from. However, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, St. Paul stresses to avoid sexual sin, as it's a sin against yourself, and you are a temple of the Lord. So sex has its place. There are five basic rules that I've come up with to have sex. I call them the five rules of doing it. TM. Let's go through them. One, you must be married. Marriage is one of the first institutions by God. In Genesis, we see God binding together Adam and Eve. Sex outside of marriage is called out in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, where St. Paul says that fornicators will not inherit the kingdom. So you can only have sex if you're married. Two, you can only have sex to the person to whom you are married. Exodus 20, 10 commandments, don't commit adultery. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, adulterers don't inherit the kingdom of God either. Three, there must be an openness to life. There can be no artificial method put into play to prevent life. No condoms, no pill, no IUD, no vasectomies, no pulling out, no dental dams, no spermicidal lube. Do you get the picture? Now, typically women go through cycles of being fertile and infertile and this does not disrupt the natural order. And this is what Catholics typically use for family planning. But that's another video. So where do we see in scripture that there must be an openness to life? Well, first there's the command by God for humans to be fruitful and multiply. And a little while later, God says that he looked at his creation and saw that it was good. Another example is in Genesis 38. Judah had a couple children. Two of them were Ur and Onan. Ur got married to Tamar, and Ur later angered God, so God killed him. Judah told Onan to fulfill his brother-in-law duties and to have sex with Tamar, and that the child born from that would be considered Ur's son. Times were way different back then. Onan would have sex with Tamar, but he'd always pull out, refusing to have a child. Well, this angered God, so God killed Onan. Furthermore, we continuously see again and again in scripture that children are to be considered a blessing. In Psalms 127, it is written that sons are to be considered a gift from the Lord, a reward. Psalms 128 says that a man who fears the Lord is blessed and his wife is like a fruitful vine. This fruitfulness, this fertility is a good thing. To unnaturally inhibit it is a bad thing. You're cheating yourself out of God's design. Four, put some respect on them. Marriage is about love. It's about sacrifice. It's about unity. It's about trying to get the other person to heaven. First Corinthians is read at almost every wedding. Love is patient, love is kind, and so on. Marriage is about being respectful, and sex is an integral part of marriage. Disrespecting your partner is not fulfilling the marriage vows that you took, whether it's at the grocery store or in the bedroom. Plus, if you disrespect your partner, you're probably going to have less sex. It's just common sense. Five, and this is a big one, consent. There must be consent with your partner before having sex. Rape is a mortal sin. In the Old Testament, it's responded to harshly, oftentimes with violence and death. Genesis 34, Judges 19 through 21, 2 Samuel 13, these are all good places to start. Deuteronomy 22 also has harsh words for rapists. And just because someone's married does not mean that they can treat their wife like property. Marriage does not mean that you're owed sex. One's partner is still made in the image of God. To commit such a crime against a person is unconsciousable, married or not. A good that God has created for our benefit and the benefit of humanity is turned into a tool of evil by those who rape. Rape has no place in a marriage. Sex is a form of prayer. It's self-giving, loving, vulnerable, intimate. It fulfills what God instructed us to do. Rape negates all this for the sole purpose of pleasure and power. Rape is not reflective of the institution of marriage as decreed by God. Rape is not reflective of the comments that St. Paul made in 1 Corinthians 13. Rape is not reflective of a good, moral person. Rape is an intrinsic evil. It always has been evil. It always will be evil. No exceptions. And it doesn't matter if you're married or not. It doesn't matter of your age or your race, your income, your job. Anyone can be raped. And anyone can rape. And all rape is sin. And rape is not just a sin of adultery. Rape is a sin of murder. It's the dehumanization of another person. And to perform that act, one cannot see another person as human. A person with unique thoughts and feelings and creativity. A rapist turns that person into an object on which they can force themselves. And that dehumanization is murder, further realized by that victim never being the same again. The course of their life has been changed forever by a selfish and evil act. Okay, that got heavy in the end, but consent is important. All of these five rules are important, and if any of them are missing, a sin has been committed. Sex is a true good. Our sexuality is inseparable from our humanity. 
but it does have its place because it can be used for evil and horrific things. Think about relationships that start and end with clothes coming on and off. Think about good families and good marriages ruined by infidelity. Think of those who seek to fill a void in their life, only to be emptied again. And think of those who contract horrible diseases, whose lives are shortened, and whose loved ones are hurt. And think of the survivors of sexual assault and rape. Think of the heartbreaking stories that have come forward in the Me Too movement. Sex is good, but it can very easily be used for evil. So it has its place. God bless, and get a colonoscopy.